Greetings, dear, precious, magnificent spirit soul that we are, that you are, that I am, that we are. Breathe right into your heart right now. Know that all is possible. Right now is the first moment of your eternal life, your eternal existence. You don't need to bring the past or anybody or anything else into this moment. Just be there. That's who you are. Now, this is part three of about detaching from problems and heartache. And the third point is that when, after you feel, when you feel triggered by things, the outer world, what other people think, what other people are saying, what other people have, what other people are doing, the age of your body, uh, young or old, where you're living, what you're wearing, all of this is you want to practice being satisfied with yourself, being satisfied with your breath as well. And that self-satisfaction comes from being attached to source and knowing that in each moment is a brand new beginning. And take a look at where you've been throwing your power away, who you've given the power to. Remember one time when one of my granddaughters told me that her boyfriend that she thought she was going to marry and all this had dumped her. And, you know, I said, fantastic. Good thing he's gone now. That's great. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about, Grandma? It's heartache. Why is it hard? Because she let him tell her whether she was good enough or not. And what is the basic program? You're not good enough. You don't have enough. You're not good enough. You're going to lose it if you do have it. And you better hold on to it. You better keep it. Because if you don't hold on to it and you don't keep it, you're going to lose it. And then you won't have any. And then you're going to die. And then if you're going to die, and other people won't like you. And you'll all be all alone. You'll be in the street. Now, look, this is, this is not you. This is that, that artificial mind, you might say. It's a hack of divine mind, if you want to call it that. It's a place where you put your value on what you possess and have, what you're attached to. It, it's like when you're attached to your religion. And I don't mean the, the teaching because, you see, you, you can find truth anywhere and everywhere when you know how to perceive truth from false. Well, I have my truth. Now, get over this new age stuff. Do Get over, I mean, old age, new age, new thought, old thought. It's just thinking. And you're, you're beyond thinking. You're a knower. And what happens is with the thinking, the mind, when you start, you start watching how the mind is operating, trying to make you feel bad. Uh, and I was talking with one of the, uh, my uh, grandmasters I was working with yesterday. And she's brilliant. She's, she's um, translated some of my books. And she's a magnificent therapist. And her work all started when she got my book, What You Think of Me is None of My Business, which you can get. It's excellent for everybody. And <clears throat> so as we were sharing, we were talking a bit. She was giving her power to all these people, all these situations. And then she came right back to her center and to realize that right now all is well. And, and all that you need, you already have. And that you are the authority in your own life. And as you do that, you start looking at the difference between what's true and what's false. And that means to do your study. To, to have what you're reading, have what inspires you. I'm, I'm a person who loves books. And I write in my books. And I underline in my books because those are my books. And that allows me... To, to if I forget and I fall off the path uh, that I have, I have association with great knowledge. Ancient, ancient, ancient wisdom that is right now modern, current, up to the moment because it's truth about us and who we are. And if you are torturing yourself with fear, if you're torturing yourself with I'm not good enough, if you're torturing yourself with I'm attached to all of these people being the way they want. Remember I told you in one of the talks, I disown my family. Now my relationship with all of my family members is so much 
better. It's just magnificent because I perceive them as people, as individuals, and I know who they are. And, and it's just like when I do counseling and such, I don't get caught up in your problem because I know it's temporary. I don't agree with you on lack and limitation. And we talk about the money thing that we talked about in point two is that there's money worlds and there's non-money world, non-moneyed worlds. And then when you're in the divine, you manifest with or without money. If you could really grasp that, you're a manifester. Money is not the source of your manifesting, and yet we're in a money situation. But let's take it to another level. It's a means of exchange. And when also, but it's not the source of your life. People say, I can't survive. I've got to survive. So they're doing jobs of, of, that, are, that are killing people or making people sick because there's money in sickness, but there's no money in health. Or, yeah, you sign up. Well, I'd be in the service. So, yeah, you're signed up to go out to learn how to kill people uh, that aren't in your situation, but they're people like us. And yet what happens is you see how the mind and belief systems distort people and, and people are living. I used to volunteer at a, the Camarillo Mental Institute uh, outside of Los Angeles, north of Los Angeles. And I did an alcohol and drug rehab. I would volunteer and do some work there with people and then with children. And what as I, were, I realized with the children, those children were born normal and natural in, in every way. But it was the people around them who were so confused, so ignorant of who they really are and torturing these children. And, and abusing them because they've been abused themselves. How do you stop self-abuse? And at first is take your power back. And each time as a heartache, you're saying somebody else has the power to make me happy or miserable. They don't. You're giving them that. Other people have the power to kill me or to let me live. No, you're an eternal being. And you have to know how that when you do drop this 3D dimension or this, this concept or however you want to call this reality, it isn't that you're gone it, and you don't go anywhere. You stay with yourself. So that's why you want to do your work now and invest yourself in, in knowing and being and detach or deprogram yourself from what's causing problems, what's causing heartache, which causes the fear, which causes the war, the crime, and all of this. And you, could, you can perceive, if you're uh, observing any media of any kind, and you observe it, and you watch it, and you listen to it, notice the heart of it. It's either empowering or it's depowering. It's either filling you with fear and self-doubt and insecurity and I'm not good enough and I want to be liked, I want to be loved, I want to be included, I want to feel beautiful, I want to have enough. You know, you can attain whatever you desire. But if you're going to get it from somewhere, you have to know that when you enter into something, whether it's relationship, it's work, or anything else, you don't go there to get self-satisfaction. You don't go there to get personal worth. You don't go there to get those values. You go there to give from who you are, to empower and nourish others. And then when you're in that, you want to stay in a continual state of self-satisfaction. And then what you do is you use your money as investments. You use money, resources, energy, what you have to give and, and, and use. You use that as seeds to grow your beautiful garden, you see. So breathe into your heart now. Feel good about your precious self, you know. There's nothing missing from you. You're whole, complete, and perfect. Not what you think you are, but who you really are. Own your power now.